You might be looked down upon for working in the food and drink industry, but I'm an outstanding banker. We're on different levels. When his affair came to light, he said those words to me. What he said deeply hurt my feelings. After this event, we divorced and about a year later, I married another man and began a new life. Our new life was going well, and our bond grew stronger day by day. For my birthday, my husband treated me to a top-tier French restaurant in the city. The restaurant was luxurious, and I was excited to enter. But as soon as we stepped inside, I heard my ex-husband, John, voice and it felt like time had stopped. Lisa, what are you doing here? Is that old guy next to you your husband? Birds of a feather flock together, huh? Despite his sarcastic tone, my husband and I were surprised, but then looked at each other and laughed. John probably had no idea who my husband truly was. When my husband calmly explained his position, John's face turned pale. He was in shock and regretted what he said deeply. I had been married to John, who held a high position at a major bank in the city. In contrast to the restaurant industry where I have been working since I graduated from high school, John followed an elite path and had an excellent academic background. Despite our different backgrounds, I was drawn to his kindness and consideration. I'll protect everything about you. So let's start a new life together. That's a surprise. Thank you so much. It reminded me of the days when we were dating, in an Italian restaurant located in a skyscraper in the city center, John proposed to me. Tears of joy streamed down my face at that moment. We were certain of our future together and decided to get married. Our families and mutual friends who had played a role in bringing us together were genuinely happy for us and showered us with blessings. And so, our married life began. The first few weeks were filled with the sweet mood of newlyweds and every day felt special. However, that happiness didn't last long and doubts slowly began to creep into my heart. I'll probably be late for work today, so you don't have to prepare dinner. Really? Do you have some special plans again? Yes, I have to work over time. Once I'm done, I have an important meeting with my boss, so I'll likely get home very late. That sounds hard. I didn't really know much about the banking profession. So, I made it a point not to interfere much in John's work or daily life. However, compared to the times when we were dating and enjoying our time together, recently he's been coming home late, citing overtime work. Then, on a certain day off, my husband suddenly started dressing up stylishly, preparing to go out. Huh? Are we going somewhere special today? I've got a golf game scheduled with my boss today. It's important for my career to maintain a good relationship with him. We've also planned to dine afterward. I'm leaving. But will you be coming home tonight? We haven't spent our evenings together lately. There's also a dinner with my boss after golf, so I expect it to be quite late. Can't you come home a bit earlier? It's lonely spending the nights alone every day. I understand that. But you know my job, right? I'm a banker. Working at a bank is tough. Your life working at a restaurant is totally different. I hope you understand that. Saying this, John gathered his things and left the house. After he left, feelings of discomfort and slight irritation toward him lingered in my heart. After thinking about how to spend my free time alone, I decided to go out and refresh myself. Even though my job in the restaurant business was demanding, I was earning a decent salary. So, I thought it'd be nice to indulge once in a while. Today, I decided to take some time for myself and went to a popular department store in the city. Upon arriving at the department store, my spirits were lifted by the myriad of colorful products. But then, I witnessed a surprising scene. That really suits you, it's lovely. Let me buy it for you, you just accept it without any worries. Really? I'm so happy. Thank you. Every time you smile, my heart warms up. Your smile is my greatest joy in everyday life. I hope you'll keep shining that smile for me. I'm glad to hear that. I will show you an even more special smile tonight. Hearing that makes me even more eager for tonight. Oops, sorry for getting your hopes up. I saw John enjoying himself while picking out clothes with a young woman. I was wearing a face mask and dressed a bit differently than usual, so he didn't seem to notice me. Their conversation clearly went beyond a normal friendship, and my heart trembled with shock and disappointment. But you said you were busy with work on the weekends before, didn't you? Has something changed? I used to be busy and could mostly meet during the weekdays. But from now on, I'll try to make more time during the weekends. I want to cherish our time together, so I'd appreciate it if you could adjust your schedule as much as possible. Trust me. I'll definitely make time for it. 
Seeing my husband so close to another woman was extremely painful for me. Although I felt a passionate anger, I reminded myself that it was crucial to grasp the truth of this situation now. So, to get solid evidence, I carefully followed their movements. Eventually, I saw them holding hands, heading towards a hotel. I captured this shocking scene in pictures and, suppressing my rising anger, rushed home. The next morning, amidst the chirping of birds, I took a deep breath and called my husband into the living room. Look at this. You're cheating on me, aren't you? That picture, were you spying on me from behind? Isn't that a bit extreme? That's an invasion of privacy. Before talking about what I did, I want an explanation of what you were doing in this picture. All right, all right. I'll tell the truth. I'm involved with another woman, but so what? What do you mean, so what? We're married. Cheating is absolutely unforgivable. What's the big deal about being married? I'm an elite in a high position. And how about you? You're lucky just to be married to someone like me, an elite banker, aren't you? I get how great you think you are. But in a marital relationship, cheating is never acceptable, right? Whether elite or not, cheating is morally wrong. Also, being a banker isn't everything, is it? Who do you think you are looking down on others? You didn't even go to college and have little life experience. But she has qualities and talents you can't match. If you're unhappy, just divorce. I'm willing to start a new life with her. Fine, let's get divorced. I didn't think you'd choose that. You're willing to give up our stable life? Well, it's your choice. His words echoed heavily in my heart, leaving a deep scar. Later, I promptly prepared the divorce papers and submitted them to the city hall on the same day. I wanted to discuss alimony and property division, but there was no response or contact from him. I thought about visiting his workplace, the bank, but I didn't want to cause a scene or trouble his colleagues and I didn't have the energy or courage. My daily work and life continued, but inside, my heart was like a raging storm, constantly in despair. The wounds inflicted on my heart by John didn't heal easily, and every time I thought of him, I would lose focus. One day, a regular customer, who had been visiting the store where I worked for a long time, came in. He immediately noticed that my expression was different than usual and approached me with a concerned look. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Your eyes usually sparkle, but today they seem a bit dim. Do you have any worries? If you'd like, you can talk to me about it. Encouraged by him, I began to share my recent divorce situation in detail. Over the years, he had visited my store regularly, and over time he had become not just a customer but a dear friend in my heart. He listened to my story very carefully and sincerely. By sharing my feelings, I felt the heaviness in my heart slowly lifting. After that, we became even closer and for a while, we deeply shared our feelings and thoughts with each other every day. Eventually, we became romantically involved and decided to get married. For your upcoming birthday, I want to take you to your favorite restaurant. I really want to make your first birthday as my wife special. I think you'll love that place. Really? I'm so happy. It's a French restaurant on a hill in the city with a beautiful nighttime view. I think you'll be amazed. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Shortly after our marriage, on my birthday, and for a while, we deeply shared our feelings and thoughts with each other every day. He decided to take me to the restaurant he had chosen with all his heart. But the moment we entered the restaurant, I heard a voice I had heard several times before. Oh, I never thought I'd see you in such a fancy restaurant. Are you here for a cleaning job or something? It's none of your business. We have nothing to talk about anymore. Isn't that a bit cold? And who's the guy next to you? You were walking with a little guy, maybe he's on a date? I heard you remarried, is he your new husband? Yes, he's my current husband. He looks a bit unconfident both in appearance and status. But you two make a good pair. As soon as he saw us, he said that and laughed. It seems that he had heard about my remarriage through mutual friends. Meeting him in such a place on my special birthday was truly surprising. I had no feelings or passion left for him anymore. More than that, I was very upset to see him make fun of my dear current husband in that way. You never change, always belittling others. Still working hard at the bank, huh? With that attitude, aren't you causing trouble in the industry? I have a long career at the bank and hold a very significant position there. Don't you think it's a bit out of place for someone dressed as plainly as you to be in such a fancy place? Maybe he's not doing so well financially. Given your job in the restaurant in your past, I guess the only men attracted to you would be of that sort. 
My heart was trembling with anger due to John's harsh words. But that anger wasn't just mine. My husband, who had been quietly observing the situation, began to speak with a calm tone. You should reconsider how you talk to people and the words you choose. It's questionable to throw such rude words at someone you've just met. Maybe you should learn some manners and etiquette towards others. Just because you're older doesn't mean you can act superior, right? But unlike you too, I hold a high position at the bank. I don't know how much you earn, but I can pretty much guess why you lead such a simple lifestyle. Actually, I hold quite a position at a bank myself. I just don't brag about it. Wait, you work at a bank? Really? I worked really hard when I was younger and was gradually promoted as my abilities were recognized. Are you still actively working on the front lines? If so, technically, you'd be working under me. Considering that, do I still seem inferior to you? Seriously, there's no way that's true. From the way you're dressed, it's hard to believe you'd be in a senior position at a bank. Not to exaggerate, but he actually works at the same bank as you and even holds an executive position. I've been consciously avoiding thoughts of you, so I didn't react much when I found out he's an executive at that bank. We couldn't believe such a coincidence would happen. As proof, here's my business card. You can check it if you want. Watching John's astonished face as he saw the business card, I barely managed to hold back my laughter. The last thing he expected was for the man he looked down upon to be his direct superior. Shocked by this reality, after a brief pause, John regretted what he said deeply. I deeply apologize. I had no idea. The words I said earlier were extremely rude. I sincerely apologize. Even if you apologize deeply here, it doesn't erase your previous words and actions. As a top class person at a bank, is it okay for my pride to bow down to a lowly person like me? I would never consider you to be at the bottom. I haven't looked down on or belittled you. I sincerely apologize for my inappropriate words and actions earlier. Setting aside the insult towards me for a moment, it seems you still haven't admitted your fault towards my wife. I'm not going to let that go so easily. What? Tell me clearly, was the woman you cheated with previously the one sitting next to you? If so, there might be an issue of compensation for her as well. Wait a moment, she isn't the one. The woman I had an affair with was someone else. But didn't you later marry your former affair partner? I heard rumors that you started a new life with her right after our divorce. And now you're cheating again with another woman? I'm truly surprised at your attitude. It's not like that, there are circumstances. I wonder why the HR department ever hired someone as dishonest as you. First and foremost, let's talk about the compensation. How will you justify your avoidance of this responsibility? To be honest, there's a deep reason I can't tell you. It's not all about the money, but if you truly had an affair, don't you think it's your social responsibility to pay compensation? Or are you unaware of even this basic societal rule? Of course, I believe that paying compensation is fair. But my current financial situation is tough, and I cannot pay immediately. I have no intention of deliberately avoiding it. I intend to pay in full in the future. I can't believe that while you can bring your new girlfriend to such a fancy French restaurant, you claim to not have the money for my compensation. Such a poor excuse doesn't suit a reputed elite banker like you. I didn't mean to make such excuses. Regardless, I expect you to provide a satisfactory solution to the cheating issue. I will claim the unpaid compensation from your previous affair partner as well. Keep that in mind, okay. I promise to bear the full amount for my previous affair partner as well. Also for your previous affair partner. Are you sure about that? I intend to take full responsibility for that matter. So please, don't inform her about it. Looking back, it did seem like she had no idea she was the object of your affair. I happened to overhear a conversation between you two, and she didn't mention anything that hinted she knew about me. And the fact that she went radio silent after the divorce. Was that because you were careful not to expose your actions? Well, that's… Back then, I had resolved internally to end things with you, so I didn't delve into it. But now, I think it might be necessary to discuss the truth of those days and what happened afterwards. In my words, John couldn't come up with a response. Judging from his reaction, it's likely that she doesn't even know that he was married or that she was just a fling. What he seems to feel towards her now might be anxiety that his past affairs will come to light and damage their current relationship or hurt her. But I couldn't care less about her feelings or his fears. I have no reason to easily forgive him for the events of that day or his current behavior. Putting aside the issue of the affair and compensation for a moment, the response to your rude remarks to my husband still hasn't been settled. I deeply apologize. 
In addition to the affair, I deeply regret my disrespectful behavior towards your husband. I genuinely express my apologies. No matter how many times you apologize, it doesn't lighten the feeling. And why do you think apologizing only to me will resolve the issue? Do you understand societal norms and rules? What? I don't have personal plans for this, but I intend to report this issue to the HR department of the company about the affair and your actions to dodge compensation. Maybe you won't be fired immediately, but some kind of action will likely be necessary. Action? What kind of action are you referring to specifically? The moment Bob used the word action, John looked startled, staring wide-eyed at him. Your affair and the subsequent financial issues impact the bank's credibility. It's a moral issue. Don't you think it's only natural that society expects an appropriate response? Yes, but what specifically do you mean by action? I don't make the decisions directly, but I've seen cases where those suspected of having affairs were transferred to different departments. Their new roles were often quite different from their previous ones. So, it might be a good idea to be mentally prepared for that. Wait a minute. A department transfer could jeopardize my chances for promotion. Please help me. This would put you in real trouble. You're pathetic. What did you say? I started working right after high school, went through our divorce, and have worked my way up to be a store leader. Next year, I have a new job at the headquarters. I've come this far on my own merits, not relying on external qualifications or titles. To be honest, seeing you scared of a potential department transfer looks pathetic. How could you say that? Moreover, a department transfer might affect your income, right? Even though you're a banker, I've heard you don't make a lot of money. Yet here you are, indulging in an upscale French restaurant. I'm worried about whether you're planning for the future. In any case, I intend to properly address the issue of compensation and other penalties. Let's refrain from further discussion here. I don't want to inconvenience the other patrons of this restaurant. Please help me. This is my last request. I want to make it up to both of you. I'll pay any amount of money. You really wear me out. The world isn't as simple as you think. You've trampled over other people's feelings and positions for your desires, and it's too late for regrets now. You have to accept the consequences of your actions. Afterward, John repeatedly apologized from the bottom of his heart, tears streaming down his face. His pleas grew increasingly desperate. The restaurant staff, noticing the commotion, kindly guided us to a more secluded private room. John tried to keep in touch, but it seems he was eventually escorted out of the restaurant by the manager. John often visits that restaurant and the staff knows him well, so they probably gave us special consideration. We were able to enjoy the rest of our time without giving John another thought. And then, about a week later. I checked the bank statement earlier, and it seems the alimony payment has been made. Please verify later. Also, it appears that the company's disciplinary action against him has been finalized. That was quick. I didn't expect things to move so swiftly. My involvement might have influenced the decision a bit, but his actions were probably a significant issue for the company. Ultimately, he's been transferred to a branch in the countryside, and it seems his salary has been significantly reduced. It looks like he managed to pay the alimony with help from his parents. That might have been the appropriate outcome for him. As for the subsequent events, John was ordered to transfer to a small branch in the countryside. It appears his marriage ended in divorce. A closer investigation revealed that he had indeed been married to the woman with whom he had previously had an affair. Surprisingly, his wife had no idea about my existence. More of his past infidelities came to light. And it seems his wife initiated the divorce, making him pay alimony out of his pocket. After the transfer to the rural branch was carried out, perhaps due to his pride, he didn't stay there long and eventually resigned. After returning to New York, he tried to find work in the banking sector again, but it was challenging since his reputation was already tarnished within the industry. He's always been dedicated to his banking career and seems determined to work in the sector. Currently, he's cutting back and living off limited savings, considering he has a large debt to his parents for the alimony payment. It's uncertain how long he can sustain this lifestyle. On the other hand, I've started a new job at the company headquarters and am thoroughly enjoying my renewed daily routine. And I am truly enjoying our peaceful life. The root cause of John's continued wrong choices lies in his overestimation of his abilities and position and his ongoing condescending attitude towards others. On top of betraying others, he constantly turned a blind eye to the consequences of his actions. The world isn't as forgiving as we might think. One way or another, we can't avoid bearing the consequences of our actions. His lack of such basic understanding suggests he might make similar mistakes in the future.
I sincerely hope he learns from this experience as he makes choices in his life ahead.